Greetings, everyone. Today we're going to talk about citing sources by following APA style 7th edition, more specifically, entering endless references. However, to talk about citing sources, we need to remember that when we use information coming from other sources, that information is going to appear in two places. First, we're going to provide succinct reference to the source in the text where we are writing and making reference to that source. And the second time, it is going to appear at the end of the paper on a separate page, which we call endless references. There in endless references, the information is going to be detailed so that any reader to be able to access the original text and educate himself herself more on that reference. As we said, endless references appear at the end of the essay or at the end of the paper. It appears on a separate page and they are entered in alphabetical order based on the author's last name. Also, when we enter endless references, these are entered with hanging indentation, which means that if the reference has more than one line, the first line is going to be flash left. Everything that appears from the second line on is going to be indented by half an inch, which means it is going to be pushed in to the right by half an inch. That is what we call hanging indentation, as you can see it here in this example. Depending on the type of source, information may be entered differently, and this is what we're going to review today. If we have a book with one author, then we enter the author's last name, comma, space, first initial, period. If the author has a middle initial, we're also going to enter a middle initial, period, space, open parenthesis, year of publication, close parenthesis, period, space, title of the book, period, and name of the publisher, period. Pay attention, the title of the book has to be entered in title cases and italicized. Title cases means that the first letter of each word is capitalized. Exceptions are articles and prepositions, which are going to be entered in lower cases. However, if the article or preposition is the first word of the title, as we have in this case, it is going to be capitalized. Let's see what happens when we have two authors. So we will enter both authors and then the rest of the information is going to stay the same. First author's last name, comma, space, first initial, period, middle initial, period, comma, space. Enter the sign end, space. Add the second author's last name, comma, space, first initial, period, second in uh, middle name, initial period space open parenthesis year of publication close parenthesis period space the title of the book italicized and title cases period space name of the publisher period let's see what happens when we have between three and 20 authors. So four books or publications that have up to 20 authors, we're going to enter 
all those 20 authors in the order in which they appear. If they do not appear in alphabetical order, please do not change that because the order may be based on the author's contribution to that publication, which means Miller has contributed more than Kane, although Kane would have been alphabetically would have been the first one. Actually, Kane has contributed less than Miller and less than Kramer. Before the last author, you're going to place a comma space, enter the sign end space, enter the information for the last author, period. Again, in parentheses, year of publication, close parentheses, period, the title of the book, italicized in title cases, period, publisher, period. In those cases, when we have more than 20 author, and this is common in scientific studies, where several people or a group, a large group of professionals are going to contribute to completing a study. In those cases, we enter the first 20th authors. All those that come after the 20th are going to be represented by the expression et al period. Et al is an abbreviation of the Latin expression et alti, which in translation means and others. Therefore, by replacing all the authors after the 20th with et al, we say all these 20 authors and others. However, remember this is the expression that we use when we enter endless references in APA style. All the rest is going to stay the same in parentheses year of publication, period, italicized in, cap in title cases, the title of the book, and the publisher, period. What happens when we have an edited book? When we have edited books, it means that in that book, there are several articles that are written by different authors. However, there may be one person or a group of people who take the responsibility of editing the book. And those editors are going to be entered in place of the authors. Still, to make the difference and avoid confusions, we do place between parentheses after the last uh, um, editor, we enter in parentheses ED, if it is one editor, or EDS, period, if we have several editors. That tells the reader that this is an edited book. Those names that appear at the beginning of the reference, they're not the authors of the book, but they are the editors of this publication. What happens when we have articles or essays that are published in an edited book? Books, magazines, journals, newspapers are considered major publications. Articles and essays are not major publications because we need many articles, several essays that are going to be compiled to be published in one book. Therefore, when making reference to an article or an essay, that appears in an edited book. We're going to enter first the last name 
of the author of this article, comma, space, first initial period. If there's a middle initial, we're also going to enter that one, space, between parentheses, year of publication, period. The title of the article, period, then add in, which means in the book, in this edited book, an article that appears in the book. In, enter first the in the first initial of the author, of the editor, sorry, period. Last name of the editor in parentheses specified that this is the editor of the book, comma, Enter the title of the book, italicized, title cases. Do not place a period. Open parentheses. Specify the pages where this article appears in this particular book. Close parentheses, period. And name of the publisher, period. Pay attention, the article is not italicized because the article is not a major title. We italicize only major titles. And as we said, books, magazines, journals, newspapers, those are the major titles. This is why you see this first title that is not italicized because this is not a major title. And then the second title, is italicized because this is the title of the book. Dissertations, when citing dissertations. We're going to enter the information of the author in the same order, last name, comma, first initial period, middle initial period, in parentheses enter the year of publication, period, space, the title of the dissertation, title cases, and italicized. Do not place a period. In parentheses, add the note doctoral dissertation or dissertation. Close parentheses, period. Then the database where this dissertation appear, period. When citing newspaper articles, we're going to enter the author's last name, comma, first initial period. If there is a second initial, we're going, uh, middle initial, we're also going to enter that one. In parentheses, we're going to enter the year of the publication, comma, the month and the date. Remember that we're talking about newspapers and newspapers may be published daily or weekly. Therefore, there is a very specific date and we need to specify that. Pay attention. First, we enter the year of publication, comma. The month must be entered in letters and then the date, close parenthesis, period. Add the title of the article, which is not going to be italicized because this is the article and articles are not major titles, period. Add the name of the newspaper. This is going to be italicized in title cases, comma, and the page number, period. We know that this is a newspaper because newspapers, the pages for newspapers are going to be written as a letter and a number. No other publications will appear as letter and numbers. Only pages for newspapers appear with letters and numbers. An article that appears in a magazine. When citing this type of publication, we're going to enter the author's last name, comma, first initial period. If there is also a middle initial, enter that one. In parentheses, year of publication, 
comma, month and date, if specified, close parenthesis, period. The title of the article, remember this is an article, we do not italicize it, but the magazine must be italicized because this is a major title. However, at the end of the mag, at the name of the magazine, do not put period, but comma. Leave a space, enter the volume of this magazine. Do not leave a space and open parenthesis. Provide the issue of this magazine, close parenthesis, comma. We have not finished. Add the pages where this article appears in this particular magazine, period. Now you're going to say, how do I know exactly when to put a period, when to put a comma? Periods are placed when a piece of information is finished. Information in references appear in pieces. So we have author, time of publication, article, magazine. Therefore, we have last name, comma, because we haven't finished the information of the author. When we finish the information of the authors, that's when we put period. Year of publication. Publication date is entered in parentheses. But if we have several pieces of information about the publication, as we see here, we separate them with comma, which means that the information has not finished for this particular piece. As soon as we finish that, we close parenthesis, period. Then we have the title, period. And then the reference of the magazine. And that's when we enter, period. What happens if we have a magazine, an article published in a magazine, however, the article has no author? In those cases, we start with the title of the article. Remember, articles are not major titles, therefore they're not going to be italicized. So, title of the article, period. Then all the information is going to flow as previously. Time of publication between parentheses, period. Italicized title of the magazine, comma, space the volume of the magazine, open parenthesis immediately, the issue, close parenthesis, comma, the pages where this article appears in the magazine, period. Articles that appear in journals follow exactly the same structure as articles that appear in magazines. Therefore, we're going to have the information of the author, between parentheses, time of publication, the article, it is not italicized, the journal, which is italicized in title cases, comma, volume, open parentheses, issue of this journal, close parentheses, comma, and the pages where this article appears in this particular journal. What happens when we have electronic resources? So electronic resources do not have an ISBN number as hard copy journals or magazines or books have, but they're going to be registered with a DOI. DOI is an acronym for Digital Object Identifier. An electronic publication has a DOI that is specifically for this publication. No two publications, no two electronic publications are going to have a DOI that is the same. Why? Because it is the identity of that publication. It is like a social security for humans. And we're going to enter all the information of that source, but at the end, 
after you have entered the information on the pages, place a period and immediately after that, enter the, the DOI. The DOI is entered as an URL. So we're going to enter HTTPS colon slash bar slash bar, then DOI dot ORG slash bar. And after that, the number of the DOI. Pay attention. In APA 7th edition, we do not place additional information like retrieved from, accessed on. No, just immediately after the page numbers, we're going to enter the DOI as an URL. Electronic resources that do not have a DOI, but they're still electronic, they still appear online. In those cases, we're going to enter all the information of that reference and without making reference to retrieved from, access to, on, and so on. Just place the website of that publication in such a way that if anyone would like to copy it the, and take that link to an address bar, they should be able to access that particular publication directly. Remember, it is going to, you're going to copy and place there the whole address of this reference. Internet resources. So sometimes you may have to use articles that appear on a website. In those cases, you're going to cite the author of that article, last name, comma, first initial, period. Between parentheses, add the time of the publication, period, italicized and title cases of the article. So that article that appears on the website is going to be italicized this time. Immediately after that, add the URL, the website of that page where that article can be accessed directly. Sometimes we may have companies, organizations, governmental agencies that are going to publish articles, books, journals, magazines to keep in touch with their clients or with their with the population. In those cases, given that these companies, these organizations, these agencies, their expertise is not writing, they still want to write properly and be able to communicate in good English with their clients, with the population. Therefore, they're going to hire an expert writer who is going to write the article for them. However, when writing the article for that company, for that organization, the, the writer, the author, is going to sign an a release of authorship rights, which means that the name of that individual who wrote the article is not going to appear and the writer, the author becomes the company, the organization or the governmental agency. If this information also appears on a website, then we have also to add the information of the direct URL. Therefore, in place of a last name and first initial of the writer, you're going to enter the full name of the organization, period, open parenthesis, year of publication, period, italicize the title of that publication, period, add the complete URL of the publication. 
same thing happens with local, state, and federal agencies. That's all for today. Remember, there is no elevator to success. You need to take the stairs. Thus, always do the right thing. Cite your sources. Thank you for today. See you next time.